Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, uh, or welcome anyone who's new around here and has decided to check me out after uh, this weekend's antics. Uh, with the outcome of that video, I did mention how I'm going to have to cut down because, you know, I, I mean, I do so many videos in a week and now that I haven't got a big financial backing of the FM Scout videos, I do have to cut down. I, I, can't, I can't justify to my family uh, spending that much time uh, with that little reward now, whereas before I was always like, yeah, but look at the money I'm making, and it's sort of like, oh yeah, go on then. Uh, <laughs> now I can't exactly justify that as much, but there is ways to change that, of course. Now I'm going to cut down the schedule, so instead of World Rotter Domination being out three times a week, it's going to be out two times a week, Tuesday and Thursday instead of Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, so I hope that's I mean, I know, I know. Obviously, it's inconvenient, but I hope that doesn't affect your watching uh, and your enjoyment of the series. Um, and I'll hopefully then will give me a chance to be able to stream at least one night uh, a week, and hopefully two nights, and potentially do a player spotlight or something like that on the channel on the weekend, which I like to do. And you guys seem to be really enjoying recently. So that's sort of the new schedule. Uh, in regards to going back to the old schedule, I did mention it in the video, but. On Patreon now, you can see uh, on there, like the goal section, there is a section which uh, will amount to the same amount of money as what I was making on FM Scout. If we do manage to hit that on Patreon, then I will go back to the previous um, three videos a week of the, the Let's Play series and one one video a week of like some sort of tactic tester or player spotlight. And then, of course, a couple of streams as well, because then it's the same financial uh, benefit that I was getting before but you know if it if it never gets that high then then that's completely fine and I understand that we're in a very tricky situation right now uh, with the world and how financially people are, are really struggling and I completely understand that so the fact that some people are still willing to to pledge the Patreon and thank you to the new people who come across the other day after the uh, the video came out and subscribe to the Patreon Really, really appreciate you. Thank you very much. Um, and to all of the Patreon members, my hat is taken off to you. Thank you. Uh, you've seen how bold I was then. Um, lockdown. Now, so that's that's on the Patreon if you wish to see it. Patreon.com forward slash Megaluke Gaming. If you want to see me for, uh, do come back to the regular schedule. I think I said at $600. It's up roughly about 350 Probably a little bit less than that. Um, so that's, you know, it's, it's a long way to go, but... That is pretty much what I was what I was making on a monthly basis through uh, uh, through doing all the FM Scout stuff as well. Anyway, as you can see, I'm wearing a very fetching shirt. Very fitting for this series, you might say. It doesn't have the Marvel uh, sponsor, unfortunately. Uh, Thanos couldn't get me one of them. But Tomo, one of my Patreon members, speaking of Patreon members, Tomo, you might have seen him in like the live streams, etc. He was, of course, on the Patreon versus Luke. Last episode we had on Twitch a couple of weekends ago, which was very fun, by the way. And he won the whole thing. He very kindly bought me this final shirt. If you remember rightly, not so long ago, uh, I, I said, if anyone can get their hands on one, then please let me know. And he went out and he just bought me one. So fair play. Thank you very much, Tom. I really appreciate it. We had some difficulties trying to get it. Postman decided to post it in the wrong letterbox. So I had to bang on my neighbor's door and be like, look, it says it's signed for. It says it's been delivered to my house. It hasn't. It was in the bloody neighbor's letterbox. So we had some difficulty, but I'm here wearing it. And I must say it looks even better in real life than what it does like on pictures. And it genuinely fits me lovely. I could not be happier with this purchase, which Tomo made, which I'm very gladly uh, taking and accepting. So massive thank you again once again, uh, once again to Tomo. Uh, really do appreciate it. Uh, it goes very nicely with my final scarf. But anyway, let's now talk about World Rotter Domination. I signed a couple of players to come in the future, and we have a big, big game today against FC Porto. Yes, we do. And as you can see by the screen in front of you, we are currently sat in second place, six points off Leo. And to be honest, I don't understand how they're doing this. I mean, we have drawn five games, uh, so that's where we're dropping our points because we've only actually lost one game. But they also have a very good goal difference. Now, we have signed two players to come to us in the future. One of them cost me £475, not £1,000. Um, so this man is Birimi Ba, and he comes from Mali. He plays in Mali for Guidars FC, and I don't even have a badge for them. That's how unique they are. But I think you can agree, 
for a 17 year old and for £425, this man is definitely worth it. Uh, of course, we don't have everything where we would like it for a centre midfielder. To be honest, he looks more like a striker. So we will look to train him when he eventually comes to us as a striker because I think that's probably the best with only seven passing. You can't really put him in midfield. Uh, but we have good determination, good finishing, good first touch. Decent acceleration and pace will live with that. And off the ball, good work, work, work rate and technique. It tells me this guy should be a striker. So this is what we're going to do with him. Coming from Mali, I'm excited about that. That's a good transfer. We have one more. This time round, a little bit closer to home. Uh, north of where I am living. In Middlesbrough, and that is Seth Warmer. And I did try and get this guy uh, in the chat in the transfer window throughout the winter, uh, for the, the summer, sorry. Uh, but they were having none of it. And now this time round, I sort of unsettled him and he wanted to leave. So I managed to pick up our man. Now this guy, he could be very good. I'm telling you now, he could be very good. And if we have a look at some of these attributes here, we're already looking at a lot of greens for a 16-year-old. He's also six foot one. Uh, he plays in the camera, but also can play centre midfield and up front, really. But he only has nine finishing to begin with. Uh, decent uh, physical attributes. Happy with them, to be honest. The natural fitness being high, that's always the good one to be high out of the lot because the rest of them you can train up quite easily. And natural fitness is never actually that simple to train up, if at all. Now, mental attributes are rather good. Vision of 15 because it goes very nicely with the passing of 14. And the first touch of 15. A bit of a playmaker. He also is very good at heading. So that's also good. Seth Warmer. Uh, 16 years old, English as well, as an Ingonch. And in the Discord, please join the FM... Uh, the, God, don't say that, Luke. Please join the Omega Luke Discord. Don't join the, the other one. Don't do that. Uh, <laughs> please join the Omega Luke Discord because we actually had a discussion with RDF. That's why I thought of you-know-who. Uh, and Ryan Cassidy, our two tactics guys... In there, make use of those guys when they're in there. They answer a lot of questions, uh, just free of charge. So that's the one of the main reasons to go there uh, is you got two of the best tactical guys ever. If you're trying to build your tactic but something isn't working, but you don't want to download someone else's tactic, why not ask them for opinions? Uh, they have been discussing the Engonch role, uh, whether it's good enough, uh, and they've also been doing a lot of tests. To, and and I think I think both of them. I found a tactic where the Engonch role has come in really nicely. So I'm intrigued to test some. I'm intrigued to test them, to be honest. So he is playing as an Engonch at the minute. Probably won't use that myself, though, to be honest. Probably won't use that myself. Now, how have we been getting on, Luke? Let's, let's, uh, we are way into the video here, and we haven't even discussed how we've been getting on since the last video. Now, when was the last video? That's a good question. Of course, we drew 0 0 against Southampton. We lost 2 0 against Hertha Berlin in the Champions Cup. Since then, we have been absolutely outstanding. We've only dropped points once in the league and we haven't lost a game at all. So, a 2 0 victory, a 2 1 victory, sorry, against Lazio in the Champions Cup. Renier with both goals there. Then a 4 0 victory uh, against Cologne. Dimitri Leolios, the centre back. Scored himself a hat-trick. He scored two from, from a corner. Then we won a penalty and he took that penalty to secure his hat-trick. Kelvin then also got on the penalty uh, after he come off uh, off the bench in the second half. So defenders scoring goals. And that continued because in the next game, Nicolo Armini and Kylian Sardella both scored in a 4-2 victory in the Champions Cup again. Kyle George and Renier with the other two. A 5-2 victory again. Nicolo Armini, 2-2. Two two. Uh, Mikolenko. Also got a couple of goals. He got one goal, actually. And then Kyle George and Leo Leos, <laughs> another defender. Three defenders scored in that game there. I only just realised. So Kyle George and Antonio Governo, two actual strikers. Antonio scored an absolutely sublime free kick, by the way, uh, which I put in the Discord. Now, a 4-0 victory and Kyle George hat-trick. First half hat-trick, a hat-trick in 24 minutes of the game. So massive game for Kyle George. He's starting to come into his own now. Uh, Locatelli with the other goal. This is the game where we drop points. Hoffenheim. Ahmed Musa scored in the 72nd minute. Renier equalised, but we couldn't uh, we couldn't like crack on and score another one, unfortunately. Uh, so two points dropped there. 6-2 victory, though. 
6-2 victory. And we went down to 10 men because Mikolenko was taken off after scoring his second goal of the game. Again, defenders. Santorelli got a goal on the first minute of the game. Kyle George. Uh, Mikolenko got his two then. Uh, Dolmen Lesjak and Magiatini in the 90th minute also scored a massive 6-2 victory. This is how it's looking in the Champions Cup. We have done very well and we are top the group. And I'm pretty sure we should go through from that. Uh, it's actually a cup that I was, I was quite surprised with how easy I'm finding the games. And it, it sort of tells me that if we do get promoted in this next season, we might be all right. Because I'm, I think Lazio is actually in the Super League. Are they in the Super League? I can't quite remember where they are. They're in the league below that. They're in, this, in the second division, as are, I think, a couple of those teams there. I think Sampdoria is in our league. They are. So we're actually doing really well. 15 points, only lost one game, and that was against Hertha in the last episode. So I'm I'm pretty proud of how we are doing in the World Champions Cup. As you can see in the FA Cup, uh, we are against Standard Liège or Freiburg. So two games which I would expect us to win. So that's good. We can keep going forward uh, because this is... I can't remember what, what round this is now. Um, it doesn't actually say either. That's, that's frustrating, isn't it? But we need to get to the fifth round minimum to make sure we don't uh, piss off the board. Now, I think I might have accidentally dropped myself in it because I requested to up the scouting range. And as because of that, now I am required to sign certain players because of requesting that. And I don't know whether you can actually see it. I, I don't think it, it has it here. But there is a scouting range I, which I have requested. But it said that they want to see... A difference in the transfer in the transfer market because of that um, and that means that if I don't do that then I could be at risk of losing my job and my contract being terminated so I was like oh shit and the first thing I did I went out and signed that Mali player because um, I went and scoured Africa and he I found him so this is that's what I'm going to do there I'm just going to have to couple, sign a couple of players I think that's that's the best way to go um, but anyway we have Porto today. They are in our league. They are currently sat in 7th place. Quite tough at the top, to be fair. The team underneath us, Rennes. Of course it is Rennes. 22 points, uh, with Porto only 3 points behind them, down in 7th. So, very tight in the in the uh, the run right behind us, because we're only on 23, and Lille sort of running away with it at the minute. So, we need to break away. This could be a massive game for us. I've picked the lineup. We have a few players out injured. Let's look at the lineup, shall we? So in goal, of course, we have Kelvin. At left back is Baca. We have Gonzalez and Leo Leos. Sardella at right back. Tonali, Locatelli and Santarelli. The all Italian midfield with Renier, Lesjak and Kyle George up front. I also stopped Lazaro from being up front to make it an all three Brazilian. Never mind. So here is the Porto side. Um, and to be honest... Weird team, right? I, I mean, some big players there. Lazaro, who we know is good. I've been watching Glory Hunter, so I know how good that man is. Um, Jimenez, Raul Jimenez up top. Always quite a good striker. Ross Barkley, that's weird. I never like this guy. Whenever I play against him, he always seems to score against me. And he's done very well so far this season. But his stats just... I don't, his attributes, sorry, just don't suggest that he's good. And it really annoys me. From Mali. So, hey. That's, it's, it's, it's coming around, isn't it? It's weird how these things happen. So he's also there, Marega. Um, big team, big team and uh, like strong team. There are a lot of tall players in there. But I do still fancy our chances. That Italian midfield, very nice. Let's go forward and see how we get on, shall we? Tonali, so far, been our key player this season. Been absolutely exceptional. And I'm really pleased with the outcome that we've had from the games where Tonali has bossed it. Tonali now. But is that, is that a penalty? We've had a lot of penalties recently. Has there been some sort of update? I just seem to be getting a lot of penalties from free kicks. I mean, the referee's going to look at it. It, t it tends to be a penalty. Uh, we're going to have to wait a while. It's that Marega as well. Oh, I'd love it if they give me a penalty for him. That would be brilliant. That would be absolutely fantastic. I think he scored in, like, youth to gold. It is a penalty. Kyle George is going to step up now. He has been on fire recently. Do not miss, please, Kyle. And that's, of course, yep, yeah, he missed. Yeah, uh, I just knew it. I knew it. As soon as, as soon as I said he's been on form, I knew I would put my foot in my very large mouth. Leo Leos at the back post can't quite get it. Oh, that's so annoying. Right, we're going to continue, though. Sardella to Tonali. 
back to Sardella. He cuts inside. There is oh, another opportunity and it's headed over. Oh, Renier, I think that was a close one. Good start to this game, though. Right, right before halftime. And we're going into the extra time of halftime or stoppage time of halftime. I don't know why I always call it extra time. Weird. Is that something that you always say that's wrong? Mine's always that. I always say extra time instead of injury time or stoppage time. Don't know why I do it. Lazaro on that right-hand side. It looks like it's going to be their attempt. And Gonzalo Borges, who is a player I am not aware of who he is, but he has fantastic hair. Look at that. What a barnet that is. A 21-year-old has scored at the back post. Doesn't look nothing special other than the hair, of course, which we know is one of my pet peeves. Uh, if a player doesn't have good hair, Les Jack, looking at you, um, I'm more inclined not to sign them. But Les Jack was just too good. I had to sign him. But I always preference players with nice hair. Jealous, really, because I don't have nice hair myself. Now, in, let's go to the dressing room. This is disappointing. Uh, my assistant is absolutely correct. I feel like we've been the better team and we should be doing better. Can we go out there and get a couple of goals? We've been doing some... Some uh, like upsets, I think, recently away from home, especially in the Champions Cup. We've been beating teams away from home, which I thought I'd be happy with a draw with. And we've gone on and done those things. So this is not what I intended, really. And nothing's really happening. This is, this is good. We're just skipping right through. Not even, we're gonna, I'm just not even going to have a highlight. Should we not even have a highlight? Should we not even bother? Should we just walk off now, really? Come on. What can we do here? Kyle George is on a 6.2. He's having a shocker. Lazaro, straight on. Um, Renier, maybe. Renier, he's also having a bad game. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to do this. We're going to bring on Antonio Caverno. We're going to put Lazaro in the cam roll. And Antonio Caverno, who has scored a couple of games, uh, scored a couple of goals recently up top. Now, Killian Sardella is always lacking. And it's a good job we've got Kelvin, who I think he has better stamina and natural fitness than... Killian Sardella, who always seems to struggle and is always tiring. I mean, he has 12 and 13. He should be doing better than that, really. Uh, although he's a better player, he always becomes a lot more tired than Kelvin. Um, come on, Tonali. Get that corner in. Les Jack. It is, it is, it is going to count. Oh, thank God for that. I don't know about you, but it looked like it went over to begin with, and then it hit the net, and then because nothing had come up because there was a book in, I didn't think it was going to count, viewers. And thankfully, it did count. Oh, I mean, what is that player doing on the post? That is criminal. Absolutely criminal. I don't care. We're up to third place again now. Come on. Kleber with the goal kick. Can we start off another attack? Mines is winning 4-0. 4-1, sorry. Tonali. Santarelli. Lovely ball to Les Jack. Down to Lazaro in that cam roll. There's players around you if you can find them. Make a... That's poor, isn't it? That's very poor. Lazaro keeps it, though. Tonali. Back to him. Nice little one, two, three. Oh, God. There we go. Raul Jimenez is now in, and he's been given a gift, and he, oh my Jesus Christ, how has he put that in? How has he genuinely put that in? That is, oh, that's so annoying. That's so annoying. We gave the ball away there, and I, I mean, Dave has a party. is going to be absolutely loving that finish, isn't he? What a finish that is from Raul Jimenez. Unbelievable goal. Right, as we come into the end of the game, it's another chance missed by Porto, but it doesn't look like we're going to come back. And that is a disappointing loss. That is a disappointing loss. I did fancy our chances. We've been very good recently. We've been on such a good run of form. Uh, and it's just typical. The The penalty miss, I think, was the reason why um, the momentum kind of changed there. I think we score that penalty. I think we're looking at a 2-3-0 win there. I genuinely do. It's just one of those one of those things. A real football terms. Like it's football manager, isn't it? Like anything can happen really. But I think we score that I think we score that penalty and we we the morale isn't as bad as what it is. Heads don't drop. You go on, you get another, and then you go on and finish the game off. But that I'm a little bit gutted, I must admit. We've dropped down to fourth place now. Like I say, it's very tight at the top. We have two two teams above us now. Both on 25 points. Lille still to play a game. If they do win that game, then we are really in trouble trying to chase Lille. But uh, Milan and Stad Rennes, the two teams above us, will be looking to uh, to track them down. Yet to play Milan yet. So I'm intrigued about that. Uh, we won't have a player spotlight today because of that massive intro. So um, we're going to just have a look at the schedule here and see when we are playing one of those teams. So we are playing Milan very soon. And we're then playing 
Wrens. I'm going to see the lay of the land around here. Uh, and then potentially we'll come back around about the Wrens game. I think that's the best thing to do for Thursday's episode. So, so first and foremost, again, massive thank you to everyone who supported the video the other day. I really do appreciate it once again. I know I keep saying it and it's one in, the, in one ear and out the other. But I, I just genuinely, I'm a bit overwhelmed by it. And, you know, the support, I didn't realize that there's so many new names who are writing on there who obviously just watch my stuff and never really comment because you know I, i'm not one for commenting on people's videos to be honest but i watch a lot of videos and there's a lot of people who if they did that kind of video i would probably write on there myself so it was really nice to see of course the regulars who i'm used to commenting in the discord and everything but all of you new guys and, and you know I, I genuinely the the things that you say and you know it, it makes me believe that you've been watching me for a long time and it wasn't just a a thing that you were writing and i i felt it i felt uh, I felt very comforted from all of your positive comments in a, in a weird way, <laughs> in a weird way. So uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. I genuinely do. From the bottom of my heart, I really do appreciate it. Um, please leave a like on this video if you can. That would be fantastic. Again, if you haven't done so and subscribed, uh, then please consider doing so as we we are getting a lot closer now to 4,000 subscribers thanks to that video. A lot of people who haven't subscribed have decided that that was the focal point of, yes, we need to subscribe to Luke and have decided to do so. So uh, hopefully this this sort of persuades you to do so as well. We're on forward to 4,000 subscribers, a very little channel, uh, but it still means a lot to me that you guys are absolutely loving the stuff that I'm managing to put out. Uh, again, if you wish to and you can afford to, the Patreon is down there. Please consider having a look at the Patreon at the very least and just seeing the goal targets that I've set there because there is some very un unambitious goal targets, I must say, that I'm never expecting to meet. Or if I am, it's in years in the future uh, where I'd like to become a full-time YouTuber. But th those are the targets that we aim for. If you don't have targets, you will never hit them. And that's what I'm thinking. But anyway, my name is Mega Luke. I'll see you on Thursday for the next one. Bye-bye. Well, thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, there's another one below that I have picked for you to have a look at. Also, if you'd like to sponsor me as a content creator by pledging to my Patreon page, you can do just that by following the link below and be like one of these wonderful people. Thank you.